from EXO. Yeah, uh, they're a Portland brewery. So you're the only one. I don't know what accent that was. I guess it was terrible. It was it was horrible. It was something horrible. Um, yeah, we got a lot of valleys out here. I can't believe you got a beer with your last name. I had to. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, so this, as far as like valleys collection goes. I'm uh, stoked to talk about this guy. I brought just about everything. What do you got there? Are you going to talk about man. that? I might. I mean, that's like a never went to production prototype never. right there. No, it went to production. They did a limited edition version. Oh, did they do it? It was a limited edition. Oh, oh I got... With the billet aluminum? Uncle Vance told me the story about this man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they made a few of these. Oh, are you going to mention... Uh, I'll, I'll ask at the beginning when I do the intro. Uh, about the week. Good. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Uh, you're going to be able to show your custom 87? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a Santa. It's, just, it's, well, I should say personalized. It's very personalized. Personalized, why personalized? I mean, it's a nice job. I did my little Yeah, well, no, I just said that. That's the only difference. That was your hand. It's a little known fact. It's not like you re beveled it and made it, like, more crazy and angry. I mean, it's already kind of an angry. It's, this thing is me. I actually got the, uh, one of the first prototypes of the uh, 87 and yeah. beat it up pretty bad. What's the point, isn't it? Yeah. What was the point? It's like having a brand new clean knife. You know that dude's never used it, dropped it. It's little. Yeah. It's a guy like with a brand new shiny motorcycle. You gotta lay it down. You gotta lay it down. You gotta lay it down. It's like when you get a brand new motorcycle, you gotta drop it. I just can't believe I forgot my one favorite thing. You did. I'm really upset. You should cry. If you run, you might It's because it's the one I always... It, 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 it is. This, I was like, I want to make sure to gather everything and bring it in. Unbelievable. Isn't that just poop how that works out? Ah! What is this little mini here? Is that a mini guy there? Yeah. What is that guy? That is... That was a... Mean chief. That is a... <laughs> there's a fun story of that one, the reason there's no latch. Uncle Vance also told me that. That's right. There was story time with Uncle Vance today. That is, look, oh, at yeah. the be- look at the false bevel on that. Hologram. That was a prototype. That was a prototype. Look down this machine. Machine. Hologram. That's not done on a hologram. Machine and hologram. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, basically, you get chuck plate. You trying to make smoking on knife or tapping? It's not a ball end mill. No, it was a. It was a. I think it was just a vertical mill. Because that's what we. All, that's all we had back in the day. Or was horizontal mills. Not vertical. Horizontal mills. So all we had were horizontal. Yeah. This is old school, which is so sick. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. What are you drinking again? Were you drinking IPA? You always like IPA. Is that like your thing? Is IPA? Well, it is my thing. I've never asked for beer. I always just take whatever they, just they give. What if yeah. we just gave you a roofie colada? Would you drink that? I'd drink it. What if it was just like warm apple juice? You'd also drink it. Right. If it was warm that apple juice. Disgusting. Warm apple juice. Mm. Warm, not treetop, off-brand treetop apple juice. Signature select. Signature, yeah. Apple yeah. Juice. The most generic thing you can find at Winco apple juice. As long as it was not from the concentrate. Mm, it has to be 100%. No, I mean, 98. Maybe with 98%. What? 98%. That's what acceptable. It's GMO. Full of GMOs. I love GMOs. Yeah. Uh, I hope they actually I feel like they make it stronger. stronger. Yeah, I want to absorb <laughs> GMO. Uh, yeah. yeah, like I hulk out. You know, I level up. With salmon it's like in Dragon Ball Z style. I just start powering up for five episodes yeah. where it's just me glowing and getting Everybody bigger. Like, I'm stopped wearing coats. All right, when are they going to fight? They're going to yeah. fight now. Yep. Still powering up. Still powering up. Super Saiyan. That just, uh, that just went really sad. Check out the art behind it. We saw Bart Simpson. And the St. Patrick's Day event yeah, here at the, the Growler. The Growler. Oh, it's not Gen 9. All right. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Beers with Benchmade. We took last week off, but we are back this week. I you am. Took last week. I took you last week off. I went to Nuremberg, Germany, which, by the way, shout out to our friends in Holland who watch Beers with Benchmade. Thank you. We are international, guys. That's right. We are international. So, Beers with Benchmade, in case you've never caught an episode, we sit around, we drink beer, and we talk about knives. 
And today's topic, of course, is valleys. We want to interact with you, though. That's the whole point of this show. So in the comments below, please shoot us your questions as we broadcast live, if you're watching live, of course. Uh, if you watch later, that's all right. Add your comments in it later. But the whole point is, if you ask us a live question, we'll answer it live for you. So also, first question, though, is, since we're talking about valleys, one of the questions that we threw out oh, on our right. Instagram that's right. is the Weehawk. What is the origins of the Weehawk name? Answer in the comments below if you know or you have a theory yeah, of where the name know. Weehawk came from. Take a from. guess. You take a guess. I would love to know what you think. There it's is a, a story. Name. We will tell you at the end of this broadcast. But um, without further ado, I am Derek and Hans. I am Hans. And you'll notice this week brought an extra special guest. This is Shane. Actually, he works with uh, our Life Shark team, so it kind of does a little bit of everything. Yeah. Notice the legitimate outfit. Even wore your shop hat today. I had to wear the shop hat. You look Exclusive. like you work in a shop. Only available oh, yeah. actually yes. at the Benchmade factory store. So, Which I've been waiting for. So. Yeah. Pretty nice. Oh, that is a great hat. <laughs> it fits great. Great shop hat. So, uh, let's get into some valleys. Uh, basic tip for beginners. That's the first question. Let's start with a question. Oh, How about that? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're talking to the right person. Yeah. I do run uh, Valley Song training classes. That's true. You are uh, a you are the Obi Wan of Valley for me. Yeah. You taught me. That's true. Just saying. Excellent. So, Hans, what's your best tip? I mean, honestly, there's like an insane amount of resources out there uh, on YouTube. Lots of great stuff. Um, some of the best videos out there that show good slow motion replays and stuff like that or have great instruction. Um, I, I always start with one move in particular, and I do have a specific rule that you start by holding the safe handle. I know a lot of people out there want to get right into crazy stuff like Zen rollovers and yeah, stuff. Yep, they yep. start holding their knife like this. No, no, no. <laughs> in the Han School of Valley, you got to start like as if you just pulled this out of the sheath of your pocket, and you're holding the safe handle, and from there, mm -hmm. the move that's kind of the most versatile to start with is probably the double rollout. Double rollout. So Show it to us. Lay it on us. Give us a little double rollout. So roll this is a bench there. made trainer, right? But the double rollout is really the best way to start. You can combo in a lot of stuff to the double rollout. But that's where you start. Now you can do the same thing to close. Double roll is nice and easy. Breaking that down, again, lots of videos out there, but over the hand, 180, over the hand, back up. And it just, it's a nice smooth motion. You can work all kinds of smaller tricks in there without ever letting go of the safe handle. Really good for the beginner. And from there, that's the move that you always show off when people say, Oh, you're learning about belly songs. Show me something. Some right. But you know you got Double that down. Yeah. Is the basic. That is the best intro. Yeah. I, I would agree with you. That is one of the best intro ones. Um, well, oddly enough, I, I this is not actually a tip of, as a good advice. The first one it was the viper, oh, basically. Oh, yeah. The latch drop. The latch there. drop. Um, no, that's if you have a latch on your That is if you have a latch. So I've stopped using latches for the most part, but the latch drop is but yeah, classic. Not, not actually my suggestion for a beginner. So, um, let's see, let's see. Uh, ever try to lock? <laughs> ever try to look cool at a party of a valley? Many times. Yeah. And you always fail. Yeah, yeah. Well, emphasis on try. Try. Yes. Emphasis yeah. on try. I have cut myself many times. Fortunately, my scars are pretty well covered up. Uh, how are you guys with some scars? Pretty good? I don't know. I've got a couple here and there. You Lots know. of bites. Uh, I would say the, the most dangerous thing is really when you get into aerials. Because even if you've taped your blade, even if you've doled your blade, that tip. Yeah, it will always sting you and that yeah. comes right down into the yes. palm. So. so regardless if you die, dull it, put tape on it, you're going to poke yourself. It's still pokey. Yep. Yeah, I would go back to a trainer or an alternative without a pokey tip if you're going to start practicing aerials. But not everything else. thing is there's always that guy. Is that like a valley? Oh my gosh. And you know it's bad because it's always this, the hand in the pocket. Yep, hand right in the pocket. What'd you do, man? Yeah. Alright, oh, cool. Uh, we're getting lots of questions. People are being interactive today, so let's oh, just get to them. Okay. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, hit it. We have a question. What is the latch on the blue and green valley? The blue and green valley. Is I that think, this guy? I think or he's or talking what? about the morpho. Oh, this little one here? It's just a little paracord. Okay, so this is actually, yeah, paracord with a diamond knot. Here, I'll hold it up maybe a little closer so you can kind of see. So this is just an alternative to uh, a metal latch. A metal latch, yeah. Um, it's almost like going latchless, only because as you flip, 
sometimes a metal latch right here will, ding. will come around and it'll ding, it'll get in your way. I mean, it really depends on the knife you're using. Right. If you use paracord, it's just never getting in your way. It's just a really nice option. And you can put cool knots or, you know, customize the colors. There's lots of different paracord out there. But we've got a couple in here that's got paracord latches. Yep. Here's another example of a latch. This is a spring latch from a uh, limited edition 42 that I just can't keep my hands off of. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just a regular T-latch that you see on our 63, our 60s series right yep. now. That's, That's the T-latch right there. Great for latch drops. Great for latch drops. Lots of space. Kind of required, I would say. Lots of space. That's a, that's kind of critical. Getting good grip because yeah. that latch is just all tiny. Oh. It's about to slip through your fingers. 87 latch actually. Oh, yeah. Show that one. So that's got the 87. That's a magnetic latch. Magnetic, oh, latch. magnetic so, latch. Kind of cool. The magnets there keep that thing pointed out. It stays out of the way. Pretty nice. Yeah, I like it. I like the spring action on it. That yep, magnet's cool. Oh, man. And of course, the 87 coming out last year as far as our 30th anniversary. That's right. Uh, Bill of titanium handle and chain. Yeah. You did a little customizing on this. You did something there. I guess there's some advantages to working in uh, the light sharp area. So titanium, pretty easy to anodize. Very easy. Aluminum, not so much. Titanium, yeah. very easy to anodize. <laughs> Water so. and electricity. So yes. yeah, here's the kind of the base color. You've got kind of a sandblasted tie versus yeah, Shane's uh, nice purple. Yes, gorgeous. It's not. Oh, I, I had to stand. I had to be different. I had to stand there. You know. We do have some fun with some uh, personalization there once in a while. Every so long. Kind of got to, especially with ballets. It's a lot of what people yeah. get into. And when you work at Benchmade, everybody has Benchmade. You set it down, you go to break, yeah. you come back, there's 10 of them. You don't know which one. I didn't first. even think about that. Exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a self preservation oh, yeah. kind of thing. Absolutely. All right, we have another question. Okay. Uh, we have. Michael Tomlin, he loved the Mangus, the Model 53, and Hans, we, this question is directed at you, yeah. because you are our ballet guy when it comes to product line management. Uh, he believes the 53 came and went too soon. This is before your time. Well, there is backstory uh, there. I'm not going to get into it, but... There's the Model 32 and 51. He that, loves G10. Do we think there's going to be a G10 handled ballet in the future? Uh -huh. What can you say about, what can you disclose about this, about being too... All without right. disclosing too much. Without disclosing too much. The future's so bright, I gotta watch it. That is the most ambiguous thing you could possibly wow. say. I love it! I love great. it! Yeah, that was great. Michael, Blowing hopefully mine. that does <laughs> well for you. It's gonna be good times. Anybody wants to know more, just come find me at Blade Show. Maybe we'll show you a little something. Mm. Yeah. Mike? But yeah, lots of fun stuff with ballets coming up. Um, you'll see some stuff in the future. Follow-up question to that. Michael Yalbit asks, do you think we're ever going to do something similar to the 42? Similar to the 42. Well, here's the deal. Uh, now, are you talking about Weehawk Blade, yeah. Michael? We yeah, we got plenty of Weehawks. We got Weehawks. I, I bet he's talking about cast single piece titanium. Is that what versus he's the you know mill right. channel titanium? Right. And the answer is there, cast titanium. To be honest, not awesome. Let's not get a little awesome sciency on you. Let's get yeah. a little science on to get yeah. sciency. Porosity. Porosity is the word. Yeah. Think of a sponge, how it's got a bunch of little pores and holes in it. When you pour molten hot titanium into a mold, you kind of get those little air bubbles everywhere. That's what a, yeah. weak spots in your handle. And what a lot of people out there don't see is we actually ended up going through all of those cast titanium valleys and having to try to weed out any ones we thought might have issues before they ever went to the market. Yep. So the ones you see out there are great, but man, it was a big pain internally. Milled stuff can turn out so much nicer. Some of the details you can get in a milled tie piece, and again, tough to see close up, but look at the channel of your 42s. Look at how kind of, you can even see some of the porosity in there when yeah. you get close to it. Compare it to a milled channel. Milled it billet. A billet milled, yeah. or even slab stainless tie liners yeah. you can jewel and have fun with. I just, you know, there's a lot of limitations when you're talking about cast tie. Still cool, right. very great. Weight, balance, cool look, nice finish, but we can do better. Yeah. The Bally guys are out today. Will we ever see a 70 series, huh? That's another question. Well, that's the that's the gap in the lineup right now, isn't it? Yep. Five what would a 70 X, series look like? 8X. Where is that 70? What's in between? Well, you might see something in the future. That is a number I am reserving. Made for of vibranium. Also. Yeah. Pure vibranium. On the fruit. Sorry, Disney, don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so what beers? 
<laughs> what beer is the best for flipping? Oh I, really, I think I read that right. What beer is best with flipping? So when you're drink, when you are flipping a valley and having a grand old time, woo! Yeah. Don't cut myself. What do you like to drink? What beer? It's the same it as uh, kind of like bowling. You know what I mean? You have a couple of PBRs, and so, you're just like strike after strike. But you go to that second pitcher, you're done. And uh, yeah, that's where it starts to get up. It gets a little dangerous. Yeah. You get to the danger yeah. zone, as Kenny Loggins says. So it depends on the type of beer. If you're going light beer, that probably gives you the most, the widest range of good flippability. But you ever notice when you're bowling, the beer tastes better, even if it's crappy beer. It tastes better when it's in a bowling pin shaped bottle. Yeah. So do we need a valley shaped bottle? Oh my god, that I just sounds redundant. Uh, so good. Valley shaped bottle. Somebody Mons, make one for notes. us. Send okay. it to take us notes. at uh, Benchmade Knife Company, 300 Beaver Creek Road, uh, Oregon City, Oregon, 97045. I know there's some glass blowers out there. Make me a valley shaped <laughs> glass. Oh. Oh. oh, yeah. Delicious. Yeah, how many comments are you getting about the shop hat? It's so uh, awesome. I don't know, but the Shop Hat, it is an exclusive. <laughs> if you are in the Oregon City area and visit our factory and go to the factory store, you can buy yourself one of these exclusive Benchmade Shop Hats. So, if not, um, just fly out. Okay, you know, it's a true story. All right, we haven't even talked about this, but what's our favorite valleys, Hans? What is your favorite valley right now? Uh, yeah, well, I did forget it. Uh, sorry to everybody. I'll have to watch uh, Ballet Song Episode 2 coming out later this year, where I actually bring my favorite ballet. But the 67, the 67 is my favorite ballet, either standard or customized, personalized. That blade shape, the Wicked Tonto that we do, is it's just one of my favorite things. And really, with the ballet, I'm just trying to make that thing look cool. And starting out with that blade shape is my favorite thing. So I have a lot of fun with that one. It's always been my favorite kind of look and feel. It will continue to until maybe that 7X series comes out. Oh, oh made, of, made of unobtainium. Unobtainium, oh, yes. Unobtainium or, handles and blade, actually. Or aluminium, material. which I guess is just aluminum. I just like how the yeah, Brits say it. It's Australian, actually. Um, Shane, what's your favorite ballad? You know, it's got to be the 87. It's just... Yeah, you just like that one from your first one. It's crowned. The ah, blade I just see. looks mean. Look All right, that. I'll give you points for it's the like blade. It's like a mini samurai sword. Yeah. Look at this thing. Yeah, right. honestly, when Madeline, I, when I told I you, if you can find somebody who'll shave my beard with an 87, we'll get that done. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Um, typically, my favorite everyday carry for a valley is a 51 Morpho. Yeah. Uh, I don't have mine on me. I happen to have mine. We have one right here. Oh, there you go. But it is so another one of my favorites. Comes with a pocket clip. Yeah. Great for everyday carry. Great utility shaped blade. Uh, and lots of it. Yeah. So it's Gorgeous. one of my favorite in terms of EDC. But if we're going to talk about blades, and my all time, one of my all time favorites, old school style, we're pulling out Model 47. Yeah, that's, 47. that's, again, Tonto. So Tonto, but with this just gnarly yeah, vault. Really this, cool This cool-looking Tonto blade, so part of that 40 series. Um, you got the cast titanium handles, you got the spring latch. Love the springer. For me, this is just one of my favorites. It's, yeah. it's a very coveted knife. This is not my own knife, obviously. This is stolen from the from the archives, and I have to return properly, as I was also told if I did not return it, I would lose my hands. I would lose. You can't flip without hands. So, so uh, I can't do a lot of things without hands. That's true. That's I would true. be I, driving would be very difficult. Um, um, picking my nose, I have lots of boogers. It's weird. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I went there. Simon Kermitten. Uh Simon wants to know, would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck with a ballet? So, a hundred duck-sized horses, so little tiny horses. That would be fun. Or, fight one horse-sized duck with a ballet. Wait, so are you just bare-knuckling the hundred duck-sized no, no, no. horses? Well, with a ballet. Is it ballet on ballet? Obviously. Okay. And everybody knows that ballets were decided to take on the Legend true. has it. Legend has it, and um, yeah, twenty-nine adversaries were dispatched with a single valley. Twenty-nine at, at the origins of the valley song yes. design. This is true. Look it up yes. on the internet. Look it Google up. Google that. Never Google, Google it. So everything multiple, on the internet is true. Everything. Multiple assailants, uh, duck-sized horses or otherwise. That's my go. 
All right. I'd rather take on the hundred duck sized horse. Oh, yeah. yeah, the small duck ones. Bare knuckles, because I feel like when I punch them, they would explode. I'm not really that strong. I, I am lying. There's there's no strength behind it. All right. If you lose, you're still. It's not you. It's fighting a hundred over there. That's true. It's not that bad. That's uh, true. Another question for us. The 80 series. Uh -huh. Are we going to expand upon it? Is there more coming? I mean, leave some notes in the comments if you want to see more stuff in the 80s. What series. kind of blade styles? Yeah, do we need Float to your do fancy. a Tonto? Do we need a Wee Hawk? We always need a Wee Hawk, which, by the way, if you know the origins of the Wee Hawk name, tell us in the comments. We're going to tell you in just a little bit. Has anybody taken any guesses so far? I don't know. We'll we'll find out. But um, it it's a weird name, right? It's a weird name. Where did it come from? There's a lot of different stories of the origin. And of course, one of the more common ones, we'll get to it right now, actually. One of the more common ones is the Wee Hawk boot knife. They think yes. it's just named after that. Yep. Or, there is a boot knife with such a name. But Hans, it is related to the origin. True story, because it's the same profile, but Hans, lay it on us. Where does the know. origin do of the Wee Hawk style yes. come yes. from? Yeah, I don't know yet. Yes. All right, well, Creator, Jody Sanson. I am uh, I'm a nerd, yep. so obviously into the sci-fi, fantasy, whatever, but I'm not the biggest nerd in the night world out there. There was, at one point in time, a man named Jody Sampson. Jody Sampson did a lot of original grinds for Benchmade, as well as... Movie swords. As, yeah, swords you would have seen in movies. Such Conan. As Conan the Barbarian is probably the most popular. Yep. Blade. Blade is his last it? work. He, he did the, no, the, the first one. He did the sword. So, big sci-fi guy. Uh, knife maker extraordinaire. Um, also a big fan of the movie... Wizards. Yes, obscure one. Very obscure. If you've seen Fantastic Planet, and you've probably seen Wizards, circa 1977. Yep. A uh, story of two twin wizards, one good, one, one evil. One evil. And evil. And the right hand man, the helper of the good wizard, Weehawk the Elf. Weehawk, Weehawk the, Elf. the Elf is where the name of the blade came from. If you don't believe me, Watch the movie. We have the elf. That's where the that's where it came from. It's a nice movie. Yeah, I like that. All really right. weird movie though. Just I'm not advocating watching the whole movie. Please. It's, yes, it's, we are not. It's odd. <laughs> it's a bizarre one. But yeah. if you want to sit through it, you can do that. Well, thank you guys. Of course, if you commented below um, on guessing where the Weehawk name is, we can't, read, right, uh, we can't wait to read it. And of course, let us know what your favorite valley is in the comments below. Yes. We'll love to hear it. We don't care, but uh, we don't care what you say in terms of brand-wise. Just tell us your favorite valley. Valleys are awesome. They're fun. But, of course, we hope it's a benchmate. That's the biggest thing. So, Hans, uh, you want to you want close this out with some flipping? Flipping? Yeah. Oh, kind of flipping. do it. Come on, yeah. sir. Sure. Come on. Give us give us some tricks. <laughs> so, flipping is actually really just dropping nicely. So, of course. Elegant. Uh, I don't know. I can go through a couple moves. You know, like I mentioned that... Uh, so that double rollout combos nicely into the chaplain. For the chaplain, you can do some twirling, the around the world, popular one also for beginners, get into some momentum based moves, helixes, and the drops. And you throw it. That's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, lots of fun with valleys. Come down to Benchmade to learn. We got trainers available. All kinds of fun stuff. And see you next week.